In this problem, we're going to be looking at a capacitor that's connected to a battery, and there's a switch, S, in the circuit. The voltage of the battery is V0. I'm going to have the separation of the plates, D. And this battery, when the switch is closed, will be charged up with a charge of Q0. Now we want to look what happens if we pull the plates apart with the switch closed initially. So S closed, that means it remains connected to the battery. I'm also going to divide my page so that I can do the problem again with S open, which means disconnected from the battery. And we'll see that the results are different depending on whether or not that switch remains open or closed. Okay, so originally the formulas that you have on your formula sheet are for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. So C0 is epsilon naught A over D, where A is the area of the plates, D is the separation of the plates. So we have negative charge down here. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, which is a constant given on the back of the formula sheet. Also on your formula sheet, you have the relationship between charge, capacitance, and voltage. So Q is CV. The potential energy stored in a capacitor when it's charged up. We have two different expressions that we can use. We can either use 1 half CV squared, which is on your formula sheet, or you can use 1 half Q0 squared over C, depending on which is more convenient. Okay, so now let's pull these plates apart and leave it connected to the battery. So now we've got the same area of the plates, but now the plate separation is double. So what happens to capacitance? The capacitance Epsilon naught and A stay the same, but instead of D, now we have 2D, which is exactly one half the original capacitance. Now, the fact that it remains connected to the battery means that the voltage across the capacitor stays the same. So the new voltage is the same as the original voltage. That means that the charge has changed. So Q, which is new capacitance times the new voltage, becomes half the original capacitance times the original voltage, which becomes half the original charge. So charge has left the capacitor and in fact it's gone back onto the battery. Now the potential energy, the most convenient one to use is the one where voltage is constant. So I'm going to use 1 half CV squared to find the potential energy after the plates have been separated. Subbing in half of C0 for C and V0 for V, I see that my potential energy is now half the original potential energy. So where did the energy go? The energy went into charging the battery because the charges went from the capacitor onto the battery. Now let's see what happens if we have the switch open. So we're still going to pull the plates apart to 2D, and it's that physical dimension that determines capacitance. So it has nothing to do, the capacitance has nothing to do with whether it's connected to a battery or not. Capacitance simply has to do with the physical properties of the actual capacitor. So once again, we have the capacitance by pulling those plates apart. But now, since it's disconnected from the battery, there's nowhere for the charge to go. So charge has to remain constant when capacitors are disconnected from batteries. The charge does not jump off the capacitor into the air, which means the voltage must change. So Q is CV, which means V must be Q over C. So Q remains the same. C is now half the original, which means the voltage has doubled. So by physically pulling apart those plates, you've actually increased the voltage on that capacitor. Now let's look at the potential energy in this new situation. Instead of half CV squared, since both C and V are changing, I'm going to use half Q squared over C, because Q is not changing. So a half Q0 is the same as Q, C is half a C0. So now I find the potential energy is double the original. 
And what happened there was the person doing the work pulling the plates apart has actually increased the voltage across the plates and therefore increased the amount of energy stored.